for Australian fantasy authors. G'day to all you lovely people and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about four female fantasy authors from Australia. These are authors that I read back in the late 90s or early 2000s. It has been a while with some of them. Some I really like, some not so much. Regardless, I wanted to feature a few Australian authors which people may not have heard of. And I would be very curious to hear if you know of any of these authors. Let's start off with the first author, which is Kate Forsyth. This is the Witches of Elenian. <laughs> I can never pronounce that. Elenian. Elen <laughs> I know that's wrong. I can't pronounce it. I've tried now five times. You do not want to hear me trying anymore. So I'll put the name on the screen. I believe there are six books in total. That's my cat. She's found a box and she hides in it. Anyway, this series is about witches who have been persecuted and outlawed in Elenian. If they practice any magic, they can be put to death. The hopes of the witches are placed on Isabeau, a young girl, or young woman I should say, who goes on a quest. That is a summary of the first book, which is called Dragon Claw. I really do like Forsyth's writing, except the dialogue. Ah, oh, she writes it in a Scottish accent and it can be really hard to get through. It is honestly way too much and it can actually put you off reading it. Other than that, however, I did like Forsyth's writing style. She's a good writer. I liked her descriptive prose and I liked the plot and I liked many of the characters in this series. Now this is six book series. I own five. I got bored with it. I must admit I did not like book five and I did not like book four and I never really finished the series. I did however really like the first three in the series. I found them interesting. I could not wait to find out what did happen but she changed directions in book four. I think that book focuses on a minor character and I just did not find that interesting. I did not find that character interesting. However, that was at a time in my life that I was getting a little bored with fantasy. I had read so much, I basically picked up anything I could find that was fantasy and I didn't like all of them. But I did enjoy the first three books. It doesn't finish the series then, but I think it could have quite easily and I would have been content for it to finish there. But if you're looking for a series of books which deals predominantly with the female perspective, I think you will enjoy this series. How to score this series is really difficult. I have not read six, nor do I think I will. I don't know if I would reread this. I might but there are just so many new authors I want to try, as well as some of my older fantasy authors who I much prefer to this series. So it's a little hard for me to score it. My brother did point out I'm too hard on books, so I'm going to try to be a bit fairer or not as hard. And I think this author, I would give a score of five, five out of 10. <laughs> yeah, maybe not that easy, but I don't really think she deserves much higher than that because I did not like the rest of the books. Mm. Next is Kate Jacobi. This is the first book, Exile's Return, in the books of Alita, which I believe is five books. My understanding is that Jacobi hasn't written anything else, which is a real shame. I thoroughly enjoyed this series. It is about a sorcerer who has been exiled and returns home because of unrest in the country where it appears some evil forces are tyrannizing the population. 
our main character is Robert Douglas, who I really loved. He is complex and conflicted and heroic and also sometimes quite tortured. I found him a compelling character, as well as several of the others. The main female character is Jen, who I really did like, except for a few things that she did. But you can still appreciate a character, even if you don't always agree with what they actually do. I really enjoyed the world that these books take place in. I loved the political intrigue. It made it complicated without being overly so, and it kept you interested. The magical system, I don't recall too much about it, but it seemed well done. It is in essence an epic fantasy series. However, I would not put it on the same level of saying Raymond Dean Feist or Catherine Kerr. That is not to say it isn't a good series, it's just not a great series. But that doesn't take away from the enjoyment that these books gave me. I think they are well worth reading. I definitely recommend the books of Alita. And for a score, hmm, I think I would give it a five to five and a half. I liked it a lot better than The Witches of Elenian. <laughs> I still don't know if I can pronounce that. The next author I wanted to talk about is Trudy Canavan. This is the first book in the Black Magician trilogy, and this is called The Magician's Guild. The story is about a guild of magicians who every year go through the city and purge all the vagrants, miscreants. Sunia, a young girl, attracts the attention of the guild because it appears that she has magical abilities which the guild is concerned might cause destruction to the city. That is the basic premise of the first book. This one is difficult for me. It is not that it is a badly written series, but I really disliked the main female character, Sonia. Oh, I could not stand her. <laughs> I must admit, I really couldn't. But not because she was badly written, it was simply that I could not relate to her. I could not relate to the things that she did and I didn't always like what she did. But that did not make her a unbelievable character. Just simply somebody, if I met in real life, I would not get along with. <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. Now, I believe that this was the first published book that Canavan has written and People were raving about it. It won several awards. I personally don't think it is as good as some people claim. I like the series. It is hard though to enjoy, say, a trilogy of books when you dislike one character so intensely like I did. Was it badly written? No. It is an interesting story. I liked the other characters, particularly some of the males. And I liked some of the females, just not our main protagonist. But as a story, it was interesting. I particularly liked the ending. It was unpredictable. And I like stories that can surprise me. And this did. I had actually forgotten that I met the author and she assigned my copy, which is always nice, right? Because it's so hard for me to get books signed being in Australia. So many authors don't come down here and we don't get the opportunity to get them to autograph any of our books. So this is, yeah, something that I value for that reason. Do I recommend this series? I actually do. I don't think it is a bad series. I think it is well written. I did find it compelling. I wanted to know what happened. I just didn't love it. Not like certain other series. I know that Canavan has brought out more books after this series, but I don't own any of those and I haven't read them. Will I? I'm not sure. Perhaps. I do like supporting Australian authors. I must admit. But I also have to like the books or the premise of the books. So what would I score this? Hmm. 
I think it deserves a five to five and a half, not more, in my opinion anyway. And that is not because these books aren't worth reading. It is simply, this was not as much to my taste because I dislike the main character so much. <laughs> anyway, okay. The last author I'm going to talk about today is Jennifer Fallon. She wrote the Tide Lord series. This is the first book in this series, The Immortal Prince. The Tide Lords is, I think, a series of four books, even though Fallon is well known for writing trilogies predominantly. I absolutely loved this series. This is one of the last fantasy series I read, I think, 10, 12 years ago. I think this one came out in 2007, and I would have bought it around about that time, maybe a little bit later. And I really loved the premise of these books. It is about an immortal who wants to die. <laughs> that hooked me immediately. But I loathed Arcady, <laughs> our main female character. I could not stand her. And because she is a main character, we spend so much time with her. It didn't matter. There was, yeah, nothing I really liked about this character. Not because she's badly drawn, again, simply just not my cup of tea. I think I am extremely fussy when it comes to female characters. I acknowledge that. But for me, she seemed so shallow. She did not seem strong. She seemed very superficial as a person and perhaps that is why I disliked her. However, the other characters, the Immortals or the Tide Lords like Kale, I found fascinating. I found his story fascinating. I wanted to know a lot about him. I wanted to know how he had got to that place where he decided he wanted to die. And I'm not telling you anything because that is something that you learn at the beginning of the book. There is a lot of divide, I think, in the book reading community as to the ending of this series. It has been quite a few years since I read it. I can't recall all that much about it, but I know some people absolutely loathe how it ended. My recollection is I was disappointed. I did not think that the ending stood up to the rest of the series, which was really enjoyable. First, <laughs> my cat is determined to be in this video. <laughs> Fallon's style is very easy to read. I think her world building and the political intrigue is complex enough without being so overwhelming that you don't know what's going on. I liked her descriptions. I liked how she drew the characters. <laughs> yeah, she's determined. <laughs> she wants to be a star today. <laughs> yeah, she wants to be on YouTube, definitely. Anyway, okay. Despite the ending, I really enjoyed this series. And I have no hesitation in recommending it because I think people will love the premise. It is nuanced. The immortals are not gods, they're just immortal with all the flaws that humans have. And I find that interesting, particularly knowing that they have lived such long lives and what they have learned, if anything, during their long lives. Now for a score for this series, I will give it a six. I really enjoyed it, except for Arcady. <laughs> but I really did enjoy this and I could not put it down. Now, after I finished the Tide Lords, I really enjoyed her style, so I thought I'd buy a few more. I bought Medallon, the first book in the Demon Child trilogy. I have read this, I think, but I don't believe I finished it. I did not enjoy it as much as I had hoped. I don't think that though is a reflection on the author. It was at a time when I was getting really bored with fantasy. Will I reread this? I'm not sure. I have heard it's very good, 
and I think I might even own the entire series but after the first one I just wasn't that interested in continuing. However, it has been several years, I have got a renewed interest in fantasy, so I might. Now there are several other Australian fantasy authors. These are simply four that I own and that I have read, which I thought I would share with you. They do not include my favorite Australian fantasy author, but I'm going to do a separate video on that in the future at some point anyway. Let me know if you have heard of any of these authors. If you've read any of their books, you know I would love to hear your opinions and your thoughts on the different series I talked about. Oh, and I should mention that I'm going to list all the books and authors that I've talked about today in my description box below for anyone who is interested. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can do the usual. You can like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you all have a beautiful day and a beautiful weekend. And I will see you next time. Bye. The Black Magician Trilogy is a trilogy. <laughs> Eliana. <laughs> Eliana. Elian. <laughs> wow, okay. Elianen? <laughs> well, I can't pronounce it. I give up.